Well, it's resurrection time. I was hoping we'd be back together in the sanctuary, but we are in our sanctuaries, wherever that may be, at home, with our family, with our friends, and it is resurrection time. You know, things happen around our world, things change, circumstances, situations come and go, but what God has done never changes. What God has said never changes. And this weekend, we are celebrating resurrection. So let's get our spirit up. Let's get our faith on. Let's worship God as we sing and as we praise Him. And let's remember the resurrection is real. The power of God to raise us up is still working. And God's doing good things in our lives. Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead in that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Salome went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body. They saw the angel sitting there. And they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. That was the thing that shook the Roman Empire that a man had risen from the dead, that he was alive. He's a living savior. Christ is alive. He has conquered the grave. He's alive. Christ is alive. Expression, 
hung on the cross, but yet glory was destined. Crushed for our sins and pierced for our transgressions. It was Jesus, the one true legend. The Son of God, and yet he dwelt among us. Came from heaven with a blessing for us. And uh, truth and love, yeah, he taught it to us. And taught us though he for his grace is enough. Obedient to the end. And no, he never gave up. So Father, not my will, but yours be done. They shouted, crucify. And no, they wouldn't let up. Bruised and battered and broken, you would think that's enough. The prophecies they were told that this was planned from the beginning. That worthy is the lamb that was slain without blemish. He came for all when we was all yet sinning. He took his last breath and said, it is finished. One day, when the glory comes, it'll be ours. It'll be ours. Said one day, when the war is won, we will be sure. We will be sure. Say glory. Hey, church family, welcome to church on Easter. Listen, to all of our friends watching out there, thank you for joining us. But check this out. We have so many cool announcements happening right here at Christian Faith. Even though we're not in the building, there are so many cool things happening online that you have access to. Starting this next week, we have Growth Track online via Zoom. Check it out. If you want to get to know what God has for you and the purpose he has for you here at Christian Faith, Growth Track Zoom is for you. And we have so many cool things happening every single week. Every Wednesday, we're posting our Bible studies with such a powerful word from God. And check this out, every single week, just for your kids, we are posting children's programs and children's Bible stories just so they can continue their walk with Christ as they're at home. So please join in with us as we're doing all these things just to lift the name of Jesus. Download the CF Church app, available on the Apple App Store and on the Google Play Store. You're only one tap away from Christian Faith weekend messages 
powerful worship music, devotionals, faith culture, and the latest news. New to Christian faith? Get helpful info to plan your visit. joining us online for Easter. Come on, this is a celebration. Come on, he's risen from the dead. Now he lives inside of us and we can be free and we can have joy. And I know that this Sunday, this Easter Sunday has been different probably for you. You're at home watching this. You used to 
get dressed up, come with your family, you used to go out to eat. And we know that it's a little bit different, but we just wanna remind you that in the midst of trials like this, for our whole world, that God is enough for us, Christ is enough. Come on, His grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in our weakness. So as we continue in worship, we hope and our prayer for you is that you would remember that Christ is enough.
Well, I'm praying that that spirit of worship and praise is flowing into your home, into your apartment, wherever you are. It's flowing into you and lifting you up. Wow, I love it. Thanks to the worship team, the dream team, all of our church team that is keeping church going in the midst of all the challenges that we face. Thank you to uh, all of our dream team that still is making church happen. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to have communion before the end of my lesson. So get your juice, get your cracker or bread or whatever you have. And by faith, that is your communion today. So be ready by the end of today's message. It's going to be fun. I want to welcome you to Christian Faith. And uh, if you've been part of our church family, hopefully you just feel right at home during this broadcast. If you're new to Christian faith, welcome. We love you. We want you. And we believe that God is working. Even in this season of challenge, God is drawing people and healing people and saving people and helping people. And we're glad you're part of the program and the service today. Now, when we get back into the sanctuary and into our normal flow of ministry, we want you to be a part. Right now, we find out what we really believe what's really important, what we really value in our lives. And that's a good thing to do, right? So when we get through this season of the virus and the lockdowns and all those things, let's remember what's important, what we believe, and let's make sure that God is first in our life. If we seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added unto us. Hey, have you seen the Christian Faith News? Yeah, we sent out about 50,000 of these. The Christian Faith newspaper headlines, we win. We win against the virus. We win against the fear. We win against sickness and disease. We win against every negative thing in our world. We just keep on winning, right? That's what Christians do. Yeah, we just keep on winning. All we do is win. And I uh, hope you got a copy. If you didn't, go online, christianfaith.us. Check it out. Great stories here. Krista Treat tells a great story about her faith walk and what God is doing in her family. We got a story about financial victories. We got stories about healing. We have Wendy's teaching the women how to win and be women who really experience God's will in their life. And uh, I love it. The Christian Faith newspaper. Hey, I want to have my own newspaper. We need a newspaper that loves God, that exalts the Lord and speaks His Word. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It'll be at christianfaith.us. And uh, we're going to keep on winning no matter what the enemy throws at us. Hey, we need you to give today as part of the church in the Northwest, in the U.S., in the world. We need you now more than ever to honor God with your tithe and your offering. Sometimes when we're challenged, we throw God away, we throw the word away, and we just get into our fear and our worry and our survival mode. That's the worst thing you can do, right? Don't panic. Don't start just surviving. Stay with God. Stay with the Word. And you know that God can prosper you even in challenging times. I've been speaking with some of our businessmen this week. I've had more than one tell me their business is up. Their sales are up. They are experiencing blessing like they never have before. And that's what I'm praying for every person at Christian Faith. Even if you've lost a job or you've been furloughed, God's going to bring it back even better. I believe He is our source. He is our provider. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. And if we'll keep our faith, our giving, our confidence in Him, like I said, seek first the kingdom 
all these other things will be added unto us. So go online, get your PushPay app open, or go to ChristianFaith.us, go to the Christian Faith Church app, and get it open right now, and we're going to pray, we're going to give, we're going to see God do some great things in our lives. I fully expect our church family to be going up in this season, even though many in the world may be feeling down. Now, let me remind you of Genesis 26. It was a time of famine in the land. Genesis 26 and verse 1, there was a famine beside the first famine, right? It, it was a double famine, a double down, a double dip, a double negative at that time in Israel. So God wasn't shaken. God's word didn't change. God's people were still under his covenant. And the Bible said Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year 100-fold. In the same year, in the land of famine. Isaac kept sowing. He kept giving. He kept tithing. He kept trusting God. And then the next verse, Genesis 26, verse 13, he prospered. He continued prospering until he was very prosperous. Come on, in the land of famine, in the time of the virus, right? In the lockdown, in all the challenge, God's people prospered, continued to prosper until they were very prosperous. And that's the word. That's the covenant. That's what we believe. So keep your faith, keep your hope, keep tithing, keep giving. We need to spread the gospel like never before. We need to reach people who are scared, who have nothing, who have no hope. We, we, we need to make sure that we are here for them. We need your help to do that. So go to PushPay, go to the Christian Faith Church app, go to the christianfaith.us website, Give as you can, tithe as God has called you to, and let's trust that we'll prosper and continue to prosper. I'm gonna pray for your finances. I'm gonna pray for this season that you prosper and rise up in Jesus' name. Father, we believe. We believe your covenant. We believe your word. We're standing in faith. We will not let fear dominate. We will continue to sow even in this time of famine. And we believe you will prosper our lives. You will meet all of our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Everybody said amen. I heard you all the way from your house. <laughs> we believe God is working and I'm praying for you daily that he's helping, he's blessing, he's leading, he's guiding, and he's prospering your life. Well, we're going to get into today's message on the resurrection. And uh, what a unique Easter, right? But hey, it's still Jesus. It's still his spirit. It's still his covenant working in our lives. It's still our reality. And uh, I miss being together. I miss the worship team. I miss the corporate praise and worship. I'm sure you do too. But we're going to do our best. We're going to connect with God. We're going to let that resurrection spirit lift us up wherever we are. And uh, I'm just praying that you'll stay with me for the next few moments. We're going to take communion in about 30 minutes, by the end of my message, we'll be taking communion together and uh, trusting the resurrection spirit of the Lord to lift every one of us in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to start in John chapter 11. You know, this is the story where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and they were so shocked, right? They, one moment they were mourning, and they were crying, and the next moment they were mocking Jesus and, and saying that he was evil. You know, so the world changes quick. 
right? Their spirit, their, their, their mentality is, is always connected to the circumstance and, and to their fears and, and to their religious belief. It's, you know, it's a bummer, but it's true, isn't it? And in the midst of that, that trauma going on, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I love that last line. Jesus said, do you believe this? Because they would see what he did. They, they would see the miracles. And even as Lazarus came out of the grave, rose from the dead, they could see that. But he asked them, do you believe? Do you believe in me? Do you believe that it's not just what I do, it's who I am? I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes will never die. Now, you understand what he's saying. Your body may die, but you'll never die. Your body will get old, but you will live on. Your body may go to the grave, but you will go to be with the Lord. So Easter is all about believing in Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Sometimes even we Christian people can get into our religious thinking, get into our religious ways and forget the reality. And I've been saying to many people recently that at times like this, we find out what we really believe. We find out what we think is really important. And, and we find out how we're going to live our lives facing the challenges of this world. And I hope you're like me. One thing I know, Jesus is my resurrection and my life. He is my strength. He is the power that keeps me going. He is the one that lifts me up above the negatives and above the circumstances. And he is the one who gives me life, not only here, but in eternity. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And we could say it like this, the resurrection of Jesus is our salvation. Right? If there was no resurrection, there is no salvation. If Jesus couldn't overcome sin and hell and the grave, well, you and I certainly never will. But if he did, and we believe, he is our resurrection and our life. So this is important, right? This is big to the Christian. This is, this is the, the stuff of our foundation. This is the rock on which we stand. Jesus rose from the dead. I believe it. He is my resurrection and my life. I'm going to stay connected to him. Oh, but did you hear what the governor said? Did you hear what the media said? Did you hear what the doctor said? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. I'll, I'll go along with what I can, with what the world is saying. However, more, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to trust God. These things in the natural may be true, but what he did in the spirit is more true right? He is my resurrection and my life. And maybe you've been mourning a friend who has passed away recently. Maybe you've been worried about someone who is sick or struggling in this, in this time. So make sure that you pray for them. Make sure that you talk with them if possible and help them to know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Because if they know that, they never die. Body may die, but they never die. Physical things happen, but spiritually we go on with God for eternity. Hey, this life is but a vapor, but we live forever with him. In Romans chapter 10, we pray this verse at Christian faith every service, right? We, we taught this verse to thousands of prayer partners over the last 40 some years. Romans chapter 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I believe in the resurrection. I believe Jesus rose from the dead, overcame death, hell, and the grave. I believe he's my Lord and my Savior. The resurrection is our salvation. You know, some people, well, I, I think Jesus was a good teacher. And, you know, I like church. It's inspirational. And, you know, those Christians, they, they're nice people. They do a lot of good things. Hey, if you don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, you got nothing. You are just lost and in this world and hoping that the world can take care of you. But if you believe that he rose from the dead, that he is Lord, now you have something eternal. Now you have life and life more abundant. Now you will never die. I'm talking about spirit. You will live forever with him. So that's what Easter is all about. That's what resurrection is all about. He won so we can win. If we deny the resurrection, we deny that he is Lord. And we do not believe in who he said that he was. Right? So we believe it. We embrace it. And it's important to us that he rose from the dead. If Christ did not rise from the dead, then nothing of the Bible is real. Nothing of the Christian message is true. And none of it makes any difference in our lives. We might as well read the Koran or, or read some other ancient writing or any other philosophy. It doesn't matter. But he did rise, raise from the dead. He did overcome death, hell, and the grave. He is alive. And resurrection is real. Therefore, what we believe is different than every other religion and every other philosophy and every other tradition. That's what makes it different. Our Lord rose. Our Savior lives. He's just not a good man that taught a nice message. He overcame and he rose up and he is resurrected. Paul said it like this, if Christ did not rise, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished for nothing. For in, in this life, if only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. <laughs> what an interesting word. The most pitiable. If this life, if the natural, if this world is all there is, then our Christian faith is useless. But if he rose from the dead and overcame sin and lives for us today, salvation is ours. Eternity is ours. God has us in the palm of his hands and we'll never die. In the physical, yes, we will. But in the spirit, we live forever with him. That's what resurrection is all about. That's what Easter is all about. That's why we're excited sitting in our homes, watching our computer screens, on our iPads, on our phones, on our televisions, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. That's what makes it great. Oh, it's great when we get to go to church and we all dress up. Did you notice my tie today? Huh? Am I looking very Eastery? Yeah, that, oh, that's great. But the great uh, of church and Easter celebration is not because of these things. It's because of Jesus. And that hasn't changed. And he's right there with you. And the resurrection reality of God is working in your life and in your family. Oh, I wish I could go to the Vatican for Easter. Well, that would be cool. But it's, it's, it's a ghost town. It's empty. Does that change Easter? No. Oh, I wish I was in church. Yeah, me too. That would be awesome. But that doesn't change Easter. That doesn't change the resurrection. That doesn't change the reality of what God is doing in your life. The resurrection is our salvation. Now, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because sometimes we forget before you can be resurrected, 
Something has to happen. And it's never good. It's never fun. It's never happy. Before there is resurrection, there is death. And going through death is always difficult. It's always hard. It's emotional. It's, it, it, it's, it's a struggle. And when Jesus died, the Bible said darkness came upon the earth. Uh, we know that his own followers scattered and some were afraid and some denied that they ever knew him and some were so shaken they did not know what to do. Others hung on and remembered his words that he would rise after three days. Like Jonah in the belly of the fish, he would rise again. And so death is the hard part of resurrection. Good Friday, darkness covered the earth. Easter Sunday, the sun arose the sun arose, right? The sunshine was back and the son of God was back. So death is the challenging part. In John chapter 12, it says Jesus was uh, speaking to his disciples and he said, the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified. Okay, that sounds good. I like that, glorified, exciting, uh, rewarding, fulfilling. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Wait, I thought we we're talking about being glorified. Yeah, well, first I have to die. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. What? What is the Lord saying? He started talking about being glorified, and then he ends up talking about losing your life and dying as a grain of wheat. Well, that's the fact. You can't have resurrection if you don't have death. And God allows us to go through things to die to this world and die to the natural things. And maybe you're feeling that right now. Maybe you've lost a job that you thought was the most important thing in your life, but now you realize it really wasn't. Maybe you'll lose something in the natural that you thought was so special and so uh, important to who you are and now you realize, that's eh, not really that important. You know, that image, that title, the stuff, the income, whatever it might have been, we have to be willing to die to this life to say, yeah, well, I mean, I'm here and I enjoy these things, but I don't love these things. The Bible said, he who loves this world cannot love the Lord. So maybe dying to some of these things is good. And realizing what's important and what's true and what's eternal is what God could do in our hearts, even in this season. And uh, if we love this life, we will lose the real life. But if we are willing to lose this life, we will find the higher life. The Amplified Bible said it like that. Lose the low life so you can find the high life. And then you find the real life, the abundant life. Sure, God wants you to prosper in this time and he wants you to enjoy all the things in this natural world, but he doesn't want you to love them. And he doesn't want you to be so connected to them that you forget him. I've told the story more than once of the guy who came to church and prayed that God would bless his life. And the Lord answered his prayer and his company grew and his business prospered and he became very successful. And then he bought the cabin and he bought the boat and he had the cruise and he had the vacation. And the next thing you know, I never see him in church anymore. 
He's traveling. He's, he's uh, hanging out. He's, he's boating. He's vacationing. He's living the dream. But he lost the Lord. He's loving this life, but losing God's life. It's happened to more than one person. Let's make sure it doesn't happen to us. Resurrection. Jesus. God's plan for our life is the most important thing. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things are added unto us. And if they die, no big deal. They're going to grow again. God is going to bring back even more. When the seed dies, it sprouts and produces more than you could ever count. So let's not worry about death in this natural world to those things that may be natural. Let's keep our eyes on the things of God. Remember, even Jesus, he despised the cross. He despised the shame, but he kept his eyes on the joy that was set before him, living for God, living for God's will, fulfilling God's plan, and uh, he overcame, didn't he? You know, when we have water baptism, we're really celebrating death. Yeah, it doesn't sound real happy. It doesn't sound real fun, but it's true. The reason we baptize is to bury the old man. And the scripture said in Romans chapter 6, you are buried with him through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. So if you don't believe in dying to this world, you never be able to live to him. And when you were baptized, you buried the old man and you're raised up in newness of life. Read it. It's in Romans chapter 6. So we embrace death and we're not afraid of some of these negatives because we know we will rise above them. We will overcome them. And the spirit of resurrection is working in us. When Jesus died, two men showed up. Very interesting. One was named Joseph. He was from Arimathea. And the other was named Nicodemus. You remember Nicodemus? He came to Jesus at night because he was afraid of what the other Pharisees would say. And Jesus spoke to him about the new birth and said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus hung on to that, believed in Jesus. And when Jesus died, he showed up. In John chapter 19, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So Joseph of Arimathea must have been a significant man, must have been an influential man. He had some kind of connection to Pilate, the leader of the government at that time. It's funny, you know, we, we try to influence our governor. We, we try to get a message to our political leaders and say, hey, let, let us do church. Let us continue to influence. Let us help our culture, our society, our people. Let, let us do what we do. And, and sometimes it's hard to get to the leader. They, they don't want to acknowledge the church. They, they, they don't want to talk to us. Joseph had a way to the pilot. The, the leader, the, the, the governor of the area in the government of Rome. And he got the body of Christ. And Nicodemus, who first came at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Wow, so these are influential men. These are prosperous men, Joseph and Nicodemus. And they took the body and they bound it in strips of linen with spices as the custom of the Jews was. They followed their customs. They followed the, the, the so-called rules of hygiene and not allowing uh, death to become negative diseases and problems in their society. And then the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb. 
No one had ever been laid there. And Joseph and Nicodemus prepared Jesus' body and laid him in that tomb. These two men embraced the death of Jesus because they believed in the resurrection of Jesus. They, they, they got in and they sacrificed, they gave, they, 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 they put themselves out there, they invested their time and their treasury and, and they embraced the death of Jesus and prepared him for his resurrection. I love that part of the story. Maybe not what you would think is a typical part of the Easter celebration, but without death, there is no resurrection. Without Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night, there was no one there to take the body and prepare it to grow, to sprout, to become that grain that rose out of the dirt, out of the soil, out of the grave. So we face death, we face the negatives, and we know that God will rise again, raise us up and help us as we go through these things. Now, in the last few moments, I want to talk about this spirit of resurrection. The same spirit that raised Jesus is working in you. You may not feel it, but he's working. You may not see it, but he's working. The Spirit of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are working the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Think how powerful that is. The power to, to, to raise that body and that soul from the Spirit. The power to overcome death and hell and the grave, the power to overcome sickness and disease. That same spirit is working in us. And that's why we're celebrating Easter. That's why we can rejoice. That's why we can be strong and filled with hope and filled with joy in a world that's filled with fear and panic. Right? Can you imagine what some people are going through? Stealing things, hoarding things, worrying, wondering, all of the drama that's in a world that's hopeless, without God, without life. It's sad, but it's very real, isn't it? We see it and we hear about it every day. So we have to remind ourselves, we have to know without a doubt the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is working in me, is helping me, empowering me, leading me, guiding me. Let me show you the scripture, Romans chapter eight. You believe your Bible, right? All right, you gotta believe this verse, Romans eight, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Romans chapter eight, verse 11. Hang on to that verse. Remember that verse. Open your Bible this week and read it again. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. He empowers me. He helps me love my spouse when I've been quarantined and feeling anxiety. He helps me love my children when they're frustrated because they've been locked in the apartment for the last week. He, he helps me to have grace and understanding even in a world of confusion and frustration. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me and he will raise me up over every circumstance, in every situation. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Whoo! You know, if we believe God's going to get us into heaven for eternity, then he can help you with your attitude toward your family. If you believe Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave and gives that life to you, then you can believe that he'll keep you healthy. And when the sickness comes, when the diseases come, when the problems come, that 
same spirit will help you overcome and rise above. Come on, if he can give you eternal life, he can get you through this season in this natural world and help you win in the face of negative circumstances. Let's believe in the resurrection and for eternity, but also for right now, because that same spirit is working in us, and that spirit that rose, raised him up is raising us up. So I believe. Paul wrote in Galatians 5, if we walk in the spirit, we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right? Don't let anger uh, overtake you. Don't let fear overtake you. Don't let uh, the negatives, don't, don't start going to the wrong websites. Don't start tripping on the wrong things. Keep your mind. Uh, stay with me every day on the social networking. I'm giving you transformed thoughts every day. I'm trying to keep you focused on that resurrection life every day and not walk in the flesh, but in the spirit, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. In, in Galatians, Paul also wrote, if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, and the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. And he goes on with all the fruits of the Spirit. That's where we are because of the resurrection. That's how we live because Easter is real. That's what we have because we believe in Him. And I'm praying the reality of resurrection lifts you above those negatives, above those hurtful things, above the negative emotions, above the anxieties. The spirit of resurrection is raising you up and helping you in this season. Now we're going to take communion. And you know what that means. We receive the body and the blood of Jesus. Why is it important? Because Jesus said, if you don't receive my body and my blood, you don't believe in what I'm doing and what I have done. So again, if you don't believe in the resurrection, then you don't believe that his body was broken for you, that his blood was poured out for you. But if you believe, then that body brings healing to yours. If you believe that blood brings forgiveness to your sins, that's why communion is so important. It's, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of what we believe. It's a part of what we have from God. So I hope you have some bread there. I, I hope you have a cracker, bread, whatever it is, and a, a cup of juice. This is the Holy Grail we, we got from Israel, just like the one Jesus used, right? And uh, whatever you have, it'll work. That's great because it's about your faith. It's not about the cup or the, the, the natural things. So we're going to pray. And as you eat this bread, you receive the body of Christ. You believe that body was broken for you. And you believe that body was laid in a tomb. And he went to hell. And then he rose from the dead after three days. You believe that the body of Christ, this bread that we hold, represents the body that took your sickness and took your sin. And the Bible said, with his stripes, you were healed. With the beating, the crucifixion, the death in his body, your body can be healed. And we believe in the healing power. That's resurrection power. The same spirit that rose Jesus heals our body today. And then in a moment, we'll take this cup and uh, we will believe that the blood of Jesus was poured out for us. The blood of Jesus uh, was given for us. The Bible said life is in the blood. And so that life of God was given to you and you embrace it. Eternal life, resurrection life, abundant life, the same life that rose Jesus from the dead. That's why communion 
is so important and so powerful. So come on, kids. Come on, mom and dad. Come on, all of our friends and family, wherever you may be. Let's believe and let's receive. Father, as we take this bread, we receive your body. We receive your healing. We receive your life. And as we take this cup, we thank you, Father. You bore our sins and you poured out your blood that we would be washed, made new, made right, righteous before God. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, let your healing power, let your resurrection power, let the power of abundant life flow into all of our church family. Lift them in whatever circumstances they're in. Help them, Lord, in whatever battles they face. We win. We rise again. We overcome in Jesus' name.
Thank you so much for joining us for service today. I hope you were blessed. Hope you found something in the word that you can take with you. And remember, Jesus got up just for you.